a guest with history like you don't know. His name is Clarence McDonald, and he's also very patient, which is wonderful. Clarence, thank you for holding on for everybody who's listening. Oh, it's my pleasure. At my age, patience becomes one of your best friends. <laughs> so, uh, Clarence, I'm just going to read some names. So everybody, you know, I want everyone to know who you are, Clarence, because I'm so impressed to be able to talk with you and be introduced to you. He's, uh, he's, he's recorded with uh, Ray Charles, Barbara Streisand, Ella Fitzgerald, Justin Timberlake, Hall & Oates, Aretha Franklin, James Taylor, Bill Withers. Yo, I like Bill Withers. Smokey <laughs> Robinson, the Jackson Fives, Carol King, Seals & Clough, Tina Turner, David Walker, the Carpenters, you know, written with people. Yeah, I'm going to go on and on. I mean, you know, a guy who's done it is a guy who's done it. So I just wanted to know who you are, Clarence, uh, with what you're about to talk about. Wow, I'm out of breath here for what happened. (laughs) Well, I just feel myself very fortunate to have been in this business for so many years and had a chance to work with so many different performers, different genres of music, and fortunately still viable and still working, writing songs and playing music. You know, I was talking today with the guy who introduced us, Joel Gaines, uh, today on the phone, and we both said and we, we, it's usually pretty, pretty passionate the way we're talking about music, that we have a responsibility, I mean a real responsibility, to constantly grow as musicians. And I don't know that a lot of guys do that. If you don't, it becomes a very long, hard road. And what happens is you end up becoming a parody of yourself. Man, that's exactly right. I mean, you, you know, the reason you're here tonight and the reason I have this show, Clarence, is because, uh, you know, if people are stuck in a hole, either for marketing reasons or writing or playing reasons, I love it when people like you say things like you just said. Oh, yeah, and basically a rut is just a grave with no end to it. It's just sad. <laughs> I know, you know, the uh, some of, you know, I was also reading the, the bio of Miles today, Miles Davis, and he moved from band to band, and here you are writing with uh, from musician to musician, I'm sure when you were each, with each player, you changed, you did new stuff. Well, that's the fun of the game. First of all, is being able to change and at the same time bring to the table the character that you arrived being. The fun of it is, well, we laughed about it. We did the Justin Timberlake album, uh, Future Sex, and the average age in the band was 61. It was James Gatson, Benoist Blackman, and Melvin Dunlap. And I would say the greatest thing in the world is to still be able to stay in touch with the youngsters. Is what we call everybody youngsters nowadays. <laughs> that is too much, man. Wow. The, the, so when he walked in the room and he's seeing wisdom and hearing, hearing wisdom, <laughs> so when you say you bring something to the table, um, you know, you're you're in a, you're in a session, and they give you some kind of charge or some kind of beginning, and you, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm presuming you feel confident. Everybody does who's got a history, to 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 take it somewhere where maybe they thought it shouldn't, have, they didn't know enough to go. Well, that's the whole idea of playing together. There's a magic that's generated by having a conversation with the other people in the room. That is the most important thing that can happen. We did a session this past Saturday, and I had the pleasure of playing with James Gatson, one of my favorite drummers, and Reddy Freddie Washington, bass player supreme. In fact, he's out with Donald Fagan and the crew most of the time. And it was so amazing because they had us play to a click, and we did it. And it was after they'd done it, they asked them, have you got what you need yet? Now turn the click off. And then we played and played with the singer, and we had one of the greatest times because playing with a click is pretty much like bringing sand to the beach. When you got James Gatson, you don't need a click. And music, and I've actually timed it. Music played by live musicians, when you get to the chorus, it'll go up about four-tenths of a BPM. And at the end of it, it'll come right back down at the verse where it was originally. That's the human emotion. And a click doesn't know anything. It just keeps plowing right through at the same speed. You know, it's, it's just like trying to drive down the street and turn corners and never take your foot off the accelerator. So it's amazing the things that have happened, and that was because of the advent of beatboxes and drum machines, which I use. 
but you've got to let music breathe. I'm kind of surprised, actually, that they, they put the click track on. It kind of blows my mind. Well, um, you got to remember, it's a new time, and people is kind of like the one kid who came out looking for a place to put a MIDI cable in the drums. He had no idea that you had to use microphones. <laughs> Oh, no, we've, had, we've had some very funny experiences. Well, you know, exactly. technology has its place, and it's like, well, thanks, we had to learn. I spend a lot of my time reading manuals and studying software, and it's like you realize the youngsters have to do it in reverse. They have to find out the things that brought them to where they are. So, yeah, like I said, we've had some very, very funny situations with people not understanding the old and the new, and you need both of them. Um, when you're going to do a session, uh, do you actually sit in, in couches in a, in, a, in a living room area and discuss some concepts? We well, play? fortunately, like the one we did last week with uh, Freddie and Gatson, we don't have to. We played together for so many years. All we need to do, well, the first thing we always ask to do is, can we hear the singer sing the song? Because I always look at it as tailoring a suit. You wouldn't make a suit and then go look for a body to put it on. So you first want to find out how the singer's feeling it and what they're trying to say. Then you can accompany the leader, which is the singer. You know, they have a bad habit nowadays of making records and then try to squeeze a singer somewhere on the track. And that's not the essence of a song because you're really supposed to follow the singer or accompany. Yeah. You're talking so so uh, so much from the the experience I've had and and hear about that that and as I listen to the radio that's what I'm hearing a singer laid onto a track that a producer did a wonderful job on you know and there's the singer there they are and you're wondering about the honesty and and where the personality is of this singer uh, almost like they put a click track on them you know but, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's crazy, but that's, you know, that's sort of the idea. Yeah, it's been very amazing. And, oh, no, we had one occasion where one friend of mine, people, and I won't mention any names, but they made a record, and they'd never ask him what key he sung the songs in. Oh, so he got yo. there, and it was like they had cut the whole record and never knew that they needed to know what key the singer was singing oh, it in. And God. these were the pros. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, you know, I, actually, the the people. This is sort of one reason I had this show, Clarence, is that the I guess it'll be younger guys, I guess, but it's not really always younger. Uh, that they see they seem so narrowly informed about their style, and what you've talked about here, even briefly, and with the list of people you've been with, is that you're listening for the soul of the person who's singing. Let's say singing, it could be instrument uh, lead player too, and you want to hear what they have to say. And then you move your musicality around to support this thing. That's what it should yeah, be. If you're not I'm doing that, that, you're not accompanying the leader. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So Well, I, the thing uh, I'm happiest about, though, is I'm starting yeah. to see sparks of this coming back. And the first thing that had to come back was the awareness that there is something to know, because that's basically what knowledge is, is the ability to know that something needs to be known. Yeah, yeah, that's the first step. Just so know, like, to know something. I've been very fortunate. We have a song out right now with a singer named Monica, and it's called Everything to Me, which was taken from a song that I wrote with two friends of mine, Fritz Basket and Denise Williams. And I was so happy to hear it and so happy to see her. She was on the George Lopez show and a few others, uh, Jay Leno, and she was playing with a live band and background singers. I said, you know what? That's where I'd like to see it go back to. Really? Hey, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying hearing it. First of all, I just think she's a class lady. I've watched her on all the little shows, and she's bringing back a sort of energy that I really like to see. She's talking about family, and she's just, like I say, presenting a much better image than what's been presented recently in what they are now calling R&B. So for me, just hearing that and seeing her has made me very happy. In fact, 
I'm hoping that I can connect with her and Missy Elliott and some of the people at J Records because they're going back to classic R&B, and I have several songs that I want to put in their ears, and especially one for Alicia Keys. Well, look, I hope it happens. So I was going to ask you if you're continuing to write, and of course you are. That's what you're saying. So you've got stuff to, to give to these people, and uh, yeah. I, you know, I, man, I, it, what you're talking about, which is a – a style of presenting yourself uh, that she's doing. Um, that's why we're talking here, you know, to, to wake people up to the possibility of changing back to a more proper way of, of, of being a person and an older R&B. Um, yeah, that's cool, man. Thank you. Yeah. But because I just think it's very exciting times now. I think the changeover is happening. Basically, the young people have had a lot of stuff that they weren't happy about, and it was reflected in the music. And what I'm seeing is now hopefully looking at a brighter day where songs bring optimism again rather oh, than yes. bringing the sad side. Because, I mean, but it is. It's only an expression of what the kids are feeling. I'm hoping that they are getting a better feeling and that the music will contribute to that. Well, you know, you and I both know that being a bad dude in some manner or a bad girl in some manner, they're thinking, uh, you know, that's what's been selling. That's what they're going to do. Uh, but, you know, I love what you just said because a big smile, a good, a good optimistic presence of a singer. I mean, that's a wonderful thing to have. Yeah, I'll tell you what, she, she reminds me of Whitney Houston uh, 10 or 15 years ago, and I believe that she is going to fill that slot, which is valuably needed at this point because I remember Whitney, her mom I used to use to do sessions, Sissy Houston, I remember when she would bring Whitney as a little girl with her to the sessions. So looking at Monica, she's 30 now, and she started when she was 12, so it's kind of like I've seen the maturity of what she's doing, and it's just really refreshing. You know, I really want to hear your new tunes, but I really want to hear. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to, through all of this. The, uh, well, you know, the, I, the, the, I promise you, I'm writing. I've gotten several folks that I'm writing with. I'm having a great time, and I've got a catalog. And Right now I'm in the midst of a publishing administration deal, so I think that the major companies are finally going to start pushing stuff that uh, has been sitting around. Because last year, we had the single on uh, Erica Badu, is a tune called Honey, and it was taken from, I don't know if you remember, the jazz singer Nancy Wilson. Oh, sure. Uh, I did a record with her, a 25th anniversary record, and it was called Music on My Mind, and the song was I'm in Love. And that's where, the, I don't even know how they found the record. It had been out of print for 25 years. But they found it, and that was the sample they used to make the song Honey. So that's the other thing I want the kids to know, because a lot of the young kids don't realize a lot of what they're dancing to is stuff that we did 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, well, th that's true. And um, the head that you wrote I, uh, that that is so different than – the tunes today are so in, uh, in, they're trying to fit into a groove and writing a very cool hook and a very cool head of a tune that, that the head is what people are singing if it's for you out there. Uh, it, it takes a real talent. You can't just write some lines and go with the groove, ah, da 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 da, da like that. You gotta write something that makes, that makes the, the personality of the tune come alive, which is what you've been doing. Well, that's the whole thing. You can't. They've been living by the beat or the groove. Uh, my wife and I went out to a club a couple of weeks ago, and we're just totally amazed because they were dancing the tracks. Some of the the tracks had a good beat to them, but there was not even any lyrics. And basically, a song is just a story set to music, and it's kind of like, where's the story? Yeah, so, yeah. It's just amazing, and I just think that. That's what's coming back, and I'm so happy to see it. Oh, that's great, man! I went to see uh, somebody you played with uh, a while back, James Taylor, and uh, and uh, uh, at the Bowl, and you know, of course, he, he's really a blues singer to me. And here's that pure voice coming right through, and I just said, I missed hearing someone's personality, you know, uh, and that's what we're talking about here. 
Yo, know, that was so amazing because yeah, I met James Taylor when I was playing with Carol King, and that's where I met James Taylor. He came to the Universal concert. Uh, the next year I ended up recording with him and then started traveling with him because I had done Carol King's tour 73 and 75. And then in 76, I started working with James. So we did the next three years and had three records, gold, platinum, and multi-platinum, which was Gorilla, JT, and In the Pocket. So, yeah, I'm sorry I missed them at uh, the bowl, but I just talked with Lee Scalar when they were in Australia, and Lee lives in Pasadena, so we're going to, he says, as soon as the tour is over, we got to go out and start some trouble, which we always do. Uh, so, you know, now that you're, that we all know that you're, you're invited to play uh, in each of these bands with Leland and, and Carol King and everybody, everybody else, Ray Charles, is there anything you can say about why you think you are chosen? In the way? And it's something that gives us some notice of how to change what we're doing, keyboard players or otherwise, to be invited. I think the main thing that gets you invited is being able to work with and accompany the person who's in the lead. Because that's what shows ultimately when you're playing music. A lot of times people are really too busy trying to see how much they can play. The idea is to see how much or how little you can play and how much it can mean. Is there a particular keyboard that are better at doing that, or is that, is that a kind of crazy question? Oh, there were, I remember Larry Nectal, who passed recently. Uh, there was just, and it, it's more personality than musicality, because there are lots of great players. But it's not how great you are or how much greatness you can show. The true sign of greatness is knowing the economy of music. Or as we used to say, nothing is so deafening as the sound of a well-played rest. It's what you don't play that makes what you play wonderful. Clarence, uh, I'm a classically trained pl a violinist, and when I would uh, come and play initially with a band, usually particularly a fusion band, they would, most of the players would do just what you just said. They would just play fast, as many notes as they could play, as many licks as they could learn from Coltrane or whatever. And, uh, and I thought, you know, man, I'm, I, I just, it was the blues that got me, and that's what you're talking about. It's just what are you trying to say here? Yeah, make it feel good. If you didn't make it feel good, all the notes you played are about nothing. Yeah, right. How fast can you play? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I call them the Guitar Institute babies. They come out educated beyond their own intelligence. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Are you able to sit, uh, Clarence, with uh, young people? And by young, I guess I mean anywhere from, well, 12 to 35 uh, in any kind of personal way and that's what, besides the stars you're playing with, but just up-and-coming players? Oh, I've been so happy. The session we did the other week is with a young lady. She's 22, and I'm thoroughly enjoying the connection with the young folks because it's the way for you to exchange knowledge because they've got stuff that you need to know, and you've got stuff that they need to know. And it was so funny because I emailed her after the session and said, I really like the fact that you came out of your shell and you sung with the reckless abandon. And it was so funny because she wrote me back and she says, thank you, McDeezy. And I had to laugh because when kids give you a nickname, it means they like you. Because I always say, oh. if children and dogs don't like you, it's time for you to reassess your personality. Oh, man, Clarence, I wish we had that 15 minutes I lost to talk. I, I hope I can do this with you again. Uh, I would I'll love give, to. I, I thank you very much, Clarence. This has got to be the end of the show, but, man, you are the best. Clarence McDonald. Uh, it's, this has been Expand Music with Noel Webb, and we will see you next Wednesday night. Thank you, Clarence. Thank you. My pleasure. Please invite me again.